Welcome to I See What You Mean, a podcast about how people get on the same page or don't, or perhaps shouldn't. Today, my guest is Susan Valdez. Susan served 14 years on the Hillsborough County School Board and is currently the District 62 representative in the Florida House of Representatives. Representative Valdez, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me today, Lou. I'm really excited to be here with you. I'm excited. We're going to have a great conversation. Why don't you start off by giving listeners a short bio? Absolutely. Once again, uh, my name is Susan Valdez. First and foremost, I'm you know mom of of three children and grandparent to five and you know wife to of, of 39 years to my wow. husband Jerry. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, so that's a little bit of my personal. Uh, information. And as far as my professional information, I was a practice administrator for many years working with the indigent population. And I, I do not like that word because by the grace of God, it, you know, I could be indigent in 30 seconds, right? Yeah, that's right. So, but but that's what the program was called and, and, and working with the working poor. I believe that that was, that was a very rewarding position because I saw individuals that were challenged Mm -hmm. with not only health issues, but financial issues Mm -hmm. and, and the stories of, I wish I would have, could have, should have. Right. Right. And I would find myself helping these adults to retool by going back to school, either a technical college or something and finding something that maybe they wish they could have done, but because of decisions that they made, they didn't quite make it. And before you knew it, you know, they were being retooled again and licensed and working as an electrician or a plumber yeah. or, you know, whatever. And they're, and now they're, they're out of dependency of, of the system to self-sufficiency. And, and that's, that's a, a wonderful thing to see. And that's what makes this country what it does is that mm-hmm. we, we give people a hand up in, in by helping them with, with social services and the tools necessary to at least we give them the the, the straps and the boots, right? Right, right, right. right to right, be able right. to get retooled, and that's the beauty of this country is being able to do that and and navigate and and yeah. live that American dream. So, um, so long, after that, yeah, you've had a long, I, um, <laughs> a long many years of of service. So after that was the was the school board, right? Was the school board, <laughs> yes, and and the school board was, if not equally more rewarding. In the sense that you can laser like really help a family with their child's educational mm-hmm. needs mm-hmm. instantaneously, and in that service there, uh, I'd never missed a graduation. Hmm. I went to all of the graduations because at the end of the day, that's the culmination of our work: is how many students are actually walking across that stage mm-hmm. with an actual diploma, mm-hmm. with a career path of mm-hmm. of where they're headed towards life. So then. From the school board to the state house, mm-hmm. right? From the, so from the schoolhouse to the state house. <laughs> uh, since 2018, the um, was more than honored and blessed by by the community to help serve them in the Florida House of Representative as their representative in District 62. And there, the work is a little bit different because unlike the school board, the school board you had seven school board members mm-hmm. in Hillsborough County Public Schools. And the superintendent that makes your leadership team. Mm-hmm. It's it was easier to try and build relationships with seven people, versus in the state house. There's 120 mm-hmm. uh, state legislators in the state of Florida, and 40 senators. So you have to make try and build relationships with 159 people. Yeah all in a matter of 60 days while you're working on pieces of legislation because we meet in session for 60 days mm-hmm. and we have six committee weeks. So imagine the the trust level that you have to have yeah. and the ability to be able to build those relationships and and find that common ground because in 60 days, we're going to be passing laws that are right. going to affect individuals' lives. So it's important that we that we try to do that. So you have been in public service in, a, in several different forms, right, for, for uh, eight, 20 or so years now. I don't, and in, in very public positions, right, elected roles, school board and state house. You're not afraid of being uh, on the front lines. Politics, no, not at all. Politics, public policy. What's your approach, just broadly, what's your approach to getting people on the same page or when you can't, what do you do? My approach is I listen a lot. Mm-hmm. I think that 
listening is such an important skill that oftentimes we don't utilize to its maximum potential. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you say less, you really are saying more. Mm-hmm. Versus if one's quick to always give an opinion or say what's on your mind, mm-hmm. may not necessarily be impactful or intentional enough. Mm-hmm. So I've learned that through my years in service. And it's important to understand the different perspectives that Mm -hmm. we all have, because how boring it would be if we were all the same, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we know that we have our differences, even within party politics. There are even diverse thought patterns within within the same uh, party. Sure. So I try to always stick to my values and and respect others' values as well. Mm -hmm. So that the conversation can happen. Mm-hmm. So if you do, if if one does not have respect for others, and it's my way or the highway, if you will, that's never really going to last a long time. Mm-hmm. And instead of building relationships, you're tearing down bridges mm-hmm. that maybe have already been built. So my biggest strategy is listening a lot, asking specific questions. If I don't understand. Mm-hmm. an aspect of what it is that they're talking about. Let it be trying to understand race, understand ethnicity, understand work challenges, mm-hmm. um, um, maybe even um, why is there a certain level of dysfunction in an organization? Right. Sometimes you have to sit back, take, take a step or two back, be quiet and listen and observe so that then from the outside looking in, one can frame questions and comments that will make them reflect and think. Well, you said some very profound things there. Very, very important for any relationship in couples, family, uh, neighborhood, you know, on up to politics at any level. First, knowing your values, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of lead with them. You like you said something really important. There, there won't be a conversation if if you're not listening. And you know it's funny if you Google anything about communication, um, effective communication, good communication. You see so much a preponderance of thinking about communication being clear, about being concise, about being persuasive. But it's all focused on the send. And and you don't read so much about the receiving, about listening, right? If you ask somebody or ask a team at work, we're going to get some communication training. What do you think we need to work on? How many people are going to say, we need to listen better? <laughs> I, I need to be a better listener. <laughs> um, it, but it's, it's, so tr- it's so true. It's so true. And I've got my own ideas about that, but I don't want to go down that path yet because I want to know a little bit more about your technique. So you mentioned your values and you mentioned Mm -hmm. respecting others' values and you mentioned asking questions. You've been in thousands of conversations in the state, in the state capitol, uh, on the school board, uh, with other, with colleagues, with families, right? So what's a conversation go like when someone's approached you, let's say, and they've got they might have something they want to persuade you about or persuade you to do, ask for your help on, convince you mm-hmm. of. What's that conversation go like for you? Where's your head go? Where's your, where do your thoughts go? My thoughts go always to saying, do you give me permission to be honest with you? Mm. And you ask that question sometimes explicitly or, or always? Oh, depending on the topic. Okay. If we're talking about you know, serious topics and, and even if they're sensitive topics right, right. as well, because sometimes people want you to just agree with what they're feeling or sure. that, that their side is, is, is it. And one respectfully will just listen. Sure. Now, if you ask me but and you're, you're asking yeah. me, then do you give me permission to be honest with you? Because if I don't ask that question, and I just become honest, I might inadvertently probably offend that individual. It, it, yeah, it could, it could happen that. It could sound that or feel that way. 
it could or or as though it could be dismissive right. it could come off dismissive so or confrontational or confrontational it could so have that's an un- why unintended unintended consequence exactly so when it's when it's something like 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 that, I will ask that question. Do you allow me? Give me permission to be totally honest with you. And once they say yes, you sure now, <laughs> because then at that point, I will always be with with whomever brutally honest in that's in reference to because that's the only way, the only way that you can. The only way one can resolve issues is by having as bad as it may seem or appear mm-hmm. the real facts mm-hmm. and the real truth so that then you can build upon that and correct whatever ill came up. Because if there's a piece of of the puzzle missing, mm-hmm. then you're still going to have it's not going to be a perfect product at the end because you're still going to have yeah. things that haven't been addressed because they were unknown, if you will. So, so how do you couple, how do you, how do you couple or sort of integrate the listening, which I'd like you to describe to me. I assume it's pretty active listening. You probably, I'm guessing you pick up on keywords that you think that they're saying, uh, maybe, some not verbals, nonverbals, but right? you see things and you pick up on it and you might ask about it. My guess is you want to really be sure you understand what they understand. Absolutely. You don't have to and, agree, but you want to be sure. It, right. And it has to be, and it has to be genuine. It right. has to come off genuine. It can't, you can't act this out. Right. 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 You know, you one, one cannot be in a meeting and act engaged because it'll dissipate Mm. that acting will you can't keep it up you can see it people can see it people can see it you can especially kids kids know a phony and a heartbeat you know (laughs) i mean geez so so having having said that you have to be empathetic you have to have some sort of feeling for whatever it is that that individual might be going through that maybe one hasn't experienced Right. Mm-hmm. So so trying to help to understand more about that feeling, if they're willing to to share and engage, then one is able to help guide and and help divert them into a different department or a different individual mm-hmm. that could possibly help that could actually laser like help them with. And I tell you, that's because as a state legislator, think about it. We vote, I, I vote on everything that has to do with the state government, mm-hmm. whether it's the, the Department of Revenue, whether it's Department of Children and Families, whether it's the Department of, of Education, uh, the Department of Agriculture. There's a lot of departments I don't know a lot of things about. You don't have expertise in all those areas, yeah. Absolutely, and nor do I ever proclaim to say, yep, I know about that. Oh, no, I'll be the first to tell you. Mm-hmm. Currently, right now, I feel at times like a jack of all trade and master Mm -hmm. of none Mm -hmm. because of all of the things that I'm learning within the different silos, right? Sure. I've learned more about um, flood insurance and insurance and bank, (laughs) you know, than than one would really want to know. But it's 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 a good thing because I live a life of learning. Yes. And by the same token. The job, because that vote that I take to me means something. Right. I don't take this job lightly. Right, right. So when I make a vote, it has to be an educated yeah. vote. You want it to be. Because an, if, yeah. Absolutely. So if it's good for the people of Florida, I don't care who carries the bill. Mm-hmm. It could be a Republican. It could be a, a Democrat. Right, right, right. If it's a good bill, I'm there. If it's a bad bill, I'm not there. Right. And I'll tell you why I'm not there. Right. Now, if there's a way of being able to take my concerns into consideration and and help that specific right. area, then great, let's work together. That, and that's the process that I take in, in Tallahassee with working with the other side, uh, my colleagues in, in the other in the other party, where I really try to get to know where these pieces of legislations are coming from based on their experiences. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So 
I try to to incorporate and share stories of individuals back home of how maybe this particular piece of legislation may or may not help this Floridian mm-hmm. that they are also representing because all right. of us represent all of the state of Florida, right? right so right, right. I have a lot of kids that I'm in charge of mm-hmm. and, and they're all my babies. There's mm-hmm. not one that's not. There's a lot of senior citizens that are mm-hmm. my senior citizens, mm-hmm. right? Right, right. And uh, so anything that we vote that affects them, I really, really look at them very, very closely. I want to connect two things you mentioned, listening and learning. Mm-hmm. Listening and learning. Listening and learning is, is, um, is crucial because I think if you don't listen, listen, you won't learn. Exactly. I really think to listen is to learn. You use the word genuine. If you, if you genuinely listen, you are, you are perhaps asking to see something from the, the, the other person's point of view that you might not have had. Correct. So you could learn something from their, like you said, their experience from their perspective. I think it's also really important to understand everything we do in life, politics included, is a means to an end. A piece of legislation is a means to an end. A school board decision is a means to an end within education. And sometimes it's not always clear how means and ends line up or work and and if I'm not clear on something that you're thinking but I ask you tell me to educate me tell me what you're thinking so I understand I might or might not agree but before I decide I'm going to disagree I want to know if I know I want to understand what you understand because I might have an aha moment you might Absolutely. explain it to me where I go oh I didn't think of it I didn't see it that way I have not had that experience but I exactly. when you say it then I can I can relate to it, I can connect. So I think there's something about listening and learning that go together. I'll give you an example of what happened not too long ago. And, and all of this, you can you can go back and look at this committee meeting. It was with the Children and Family and Seniors Committee. And we're, we've been talking this past committee, past few weeks in committees about fatherlessness and what causes fatherlessness. And we had different pre- presenters come in and sure. talk about you know, when you talk about the fatherlessness, you might think about those dads that are just completely disengaged from mm-hmm. their their children's lives. And and the theme was like it made me feel personally as though, my gosh, not every man is a bad dad. Right. Having said that, how do we balance this out? It so happened that I received a phone call from a constituent who was sharing his story of how challenging it was for him to have some rights with his children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he fought, he fought, he fought because he loves his children and he wants to have a relationship with his children. Mm -hmm. And when he came and spoke to the committee, there was an aha moment. Mm Mm-hmm. Because members of the committee were not thinking about the other side of of the coin of what happens to those that are good dads that are trying to do what's right by their children and the system Mm -hmm. gets in the way. So, you know, those you could when we make when we make laws, when we make laws, there are unintended consequences for the good players. And that's why we, it's important that we have to listen. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's critical. What do you watch for or listen for? Maybe you're picking up on their emotion first. So you know that something matters to them. Something, it means something to them. What are the ways you interact with them to get them to, to unpack that? So you understand it a little bit more and they, and they see that you understand it. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that. I don't know if anyone that's listening to this has ever really gone into a legislator's office. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very, it can be a very cold feeling. It can be a very, what's the word I want to use? Is it impersonal? Impersonal, but yet one's position is elevated to Ah. such a level. Mm -hmm. That that it's like, oh my gosh, is she approachable? Right. Is she, gotcha. will she understand? Does she care? 
gotcha. um, because she's in this in this state house of representatives. Yeah. You know, think about it. That's like my state congresswoman. Right. You know, oh, my gosh. Right. It's almost like right. we are um, unattainable. Right. Mm-hmm. So I try to yeah. unapproachable, yeah. unattainable yeah. Yeah. Or, or just the mere fact there's some folks in, in, in our community that feel that they're not worthy of standing before me because they might not be dressed well or, or they, they, they may, you know, so that cultural aspect. So regardless, what I try to do always is have a very welcoming atmosphere. Okay. My door is always open right now. My door, (laughs) if you can, is open, right? So it's one of those things that my staff can hear what I'm saying. I, I, I don't, I'm an open book that way. Um, my staff knows that any individual that comes into our office seeking assistance, we will attempt to help. And if it's outside of our jurisdiction, right. we will find a way of getting them to where they connected need to go to right. and connect it. And then hopefully that silo will then follow up with us. If not, staff is very good about following back up with them to ensure that our constituents concern Mm -hmm. was addressed and hopefully resolved or with some sort of direction. So my office in Tallahassee, you walk in, it's, it's going to be warm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be welcoming. uh, welcoming. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a place where we're going to have music playing in the background. I will offer you something to drink. I will offer you, you know, anything so you're comfortable. And now let's begin the conversation. Mm-hmm. And and even when you have sometimes in, in leadership, you have to have very difficult conversations mm-hmm. that are just difficult to sure, have because sure. they're, they're, they're not a good topic, if you will. If something ugly has happened and you have to address it. Even then, when you have those difficult conversations, one can still have them in a manner in which they are in a welcoming way and still wind up getting the work done. Sure. You're showing respect. But more than that, it almost sounds more like what someone would do welcoming someone into their home. Absolutely. With some warmth, with some, right, you're welcome here and, and absolutely yeah okay okay absolutely you don't have to be a bully right you don't have to be like what do you want you know like right. that's that's just the wrong the day see the the, the day i forget who i am and where you i come from do something else huh it's the day that, exactly it's yeah. the day that you need to stop serving because yeah. there's nothing like servant leadership and and that's where i i try to go always think how i could be of service to others mm-hmm. and and helping others because it's tough going through struggles on your own. Mm-hmm. And when when one goes to different agencies to try and yeah, see right, about right. getting assistance, right. you know, you're just another number, you you just come in and, and maybe the level of customer service is not where it needs to be in right. order to make you feel welcoming and say, right. have a little bit of hope. Right. You know, have a little bit of right, hope. Right, right, right. And 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 that hope just can cannot ever go away. One of the hardest things for all, all of us to deal with is strong emotion that someone else displays. They could be sad about something. They could be angry about something. They could be outraged about something. They could be afraid, just afraid. But sometimes when someone else has strong emotion that they display, we have to manage our own emotional response. To that emotion and we're not talking about the issues yet we're not getting into what why do you feel that way what can i do to help we've not gotten to that point yet it seems to me that you've developed a way that you do that pretty comfortably for yourself i don't think you're rattled by somebody walking in whether it's a colleague of yours and you're not on the same page about some legislation or a constituent who's really upset about something that happened in the district tell me how you how you talk to them so that you can, you want to hear, tell me, I see you're upset, tell me more about it so I understand. And then how you go from that part of the interaction of the conversation to, I think you said the phrase, you got to get down to the nuts and bolts of it 
eventually to see what you can do. Yep. So how do you start? You've already welcomed them, so there's that good setting. Now yep. that's the beginning of the conversation where maybe they're going to unload <laughs> on you. Right. right, right. And and when that happens, when that happens, I let I don't take it personally. Right. Because, again, in order to really find out what the root of the problem is, come in and tell me how you feel. I don't care if in the way that you are presenting yourself is is with um, explicit words or, mm -hmm. you know, because that's your way of getting it off your chest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so again, I look at people and look at individuals for who they, they are and what they're trying to do. And, and just, just, again, if they come at with a different type of attitude and I have to be listening, I have to be empathetic if it's a sad thing and, and right. they're, they're just spilling their guts and telling me what's going on, then at that point, I'm there to, to hold their hand, listen. And if I cannot say anything or have a, a solution, at least I'm there as their ear. Mm -hmm. And and by the same token, at the end of the conversation, mm -hmm. I'm going to give them a hug. Mm -hmm. Because maybe that individual, all they needed to do was just get it off their chest. In whatever form it came in, so I never take it personally. Right. Unless if if they come at me personally, it's yeah. a different story. That's a different conversation. You know, sure. That's a different conversation. But if they come at me personally, at the end, you know, it's it's their opinion, which they are entitled to. And if I know that I've done everything that I've been able to do to help a constituent with whatever challenge they may have, and and it's everything that I've done can do. I know for a fact that my staff and, and myself, right. we've done everything we can right. to help that constituent. And although there may have been a situation where it wasn't resolved right. to their liking or that's that's above my pay grade at that point because right. I don't have access or have any jurisdiction right. over somebody else's department right. or anything like that. Right. And that the, the 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 effort was actually put in right. to try and resolve an ill situation for that individual. So long as we can show the work that we've tried to do, and that we actually went above and beyond, then that's the best that we could do. You wished you could help them, but you have to be satisfied with your effort. With, it, absolutely, because at the end of the day, we we cannot. As legislators, I cannot go over to a department and say, you have to do this. Mm, no, that, <laughs> that's, that's not the way it works. We can advocate how we need to change the way you do things in your department. Right. That might be a conversation. Right. You know, right. building relationships is not easy. Right. Because it has to be a two-way situation, right? right? So understanding what makes another legislator tick or or what makes them who they are, that takes time to learn. And it's up to each of us True. to try and build up and get to know each other in that quick turnaround time because we're going to be supporting each other or be differing in pieces of legislation so we still have to work together. I don't want to, I don't want to dwell on this, but to go back to what we talked about a, a few minutes ago, I always felt, I always thought that if someone was feeling strong emotion because they were displaying it, I could see they felt... Strong emotion. I wanted to know why. There must be a reason why you, you're this upset or you're this, you know, fill in the blank, whatever the word is. And, and if you're coming to me because of, of my role, I'm your spouse, I'm your father, I'm your neighbor, I'm your state representative. If there's something I can do, I want, I will try. I want to know why. It helped, always helped me to understand what they understood. Again, I don't have to agree with it. or, or my, Maybe agreement's not even the point, Susan. If someone's had something, <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's not that you agree or disagree. It's more so that it's a situation that that, that individual they had, is experiencing. Right, they were, right. And, it, and it may be so unique. You know, it's like, whoa, okay, talk to right. you. Exactly. Talk to me a little bit about help me understand so I can better help you navigate. And and sometimes, for instance, in Tallahassee, a lot of people says, oh, Representative, thank you for giving me 10 minutes of your time. You know, think about, think about that. Mm-hmm. What time do you have to build relationships in 10 minutes? Right. You know, so so when I come into an appointment and they're coming into it, and it's not that I don't respect everybody else's time, is that so much more so that I know how quickly my time 
gets booked up, that then I may not be able to fully, truly understand right, true. what those challenges are. And then I'm just 10 minutes and, okay, boom, yeah. got to go see you. No, I, I can't operate like that. I, I, if, if an individual needs to see me, so normally I try to give my appointments at least at a minimum of half hour, mm-hmm. um, at a minimum. And sometimes we go a little bit over because once – once they feel, once an individual feels comfortable with you and knowing your integrity, that you're not going to go out there and blab everybody else's business out in the world. Because that's another thing, that trust, mm. the ability to know that just because that individual, that stranger that came to see you, they have to trust enough to sometimes say the most deepest darkest right, true. concern that they about have their lives, right. about their lives that then you know there's a trust factor there that you you can't break one can't break that trust with you with your constituents um so so no, it's a very, that's super important it's a very humbling thing to do if you have to if, if you're <clears throat> asking for help and you're really in a bad absolutely. way absolutely very humbling yeah and 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 could be perceived as well as oh my god are they going to judge me because right, right, of this or right. because of that and i remind my uh, constituents that although i wear a black jacket it's not a black robe i'm nobody's judge and the day we die is when we're going to get judged so <laughs> i'm good so long as, there was a saying in spanish that tr- that translates differently in english but in spanish is as bien y no mira quien do good and no matter who uh-huh uh, yeah. You know, so it doesn't yeah. matter who comes by yeah. you. They need something. You do good by them. Yeah. And keep it moving. A princ- that's a principle or an ethic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a principle. Exactly. You do good be- because you're going to get something good out of it. You don't do good for people because they could help you. Because yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You yeah. just do it because it's because, the right thing to do. You yes. go and you go help yes. and keep it moving. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so I like to think about what's it mean to be on the same page? How, mm. do, how do we get there? What helps us get there? What gets in the way of getting us there? And what do we do if we can't? I've done a lot of work in organizations. So the situation in organizations is, as in politics to some degree, well, at least while you're in office, you have people you have to continue to work with even if you don't agree on things. So you you have to, you try to build the relationship of respect so that you can work on other things, if you didn't disagree on one on one thing, but how, what tell, just come tell me the things that come to mind if when when you think about what's it mean to be on the same page? How do we get there? What happens if we can't? Sometimes people utilize kindness as a weakness, and um, mm-hmm. you know this this world in in politics can be, as you can see, you, you're seeing it every day, how dirty and ugly and divisive yeah, it, could it could be, mm-hmm. and and yet government was was really put in place to to help others and to govern to help govern ourselves so that when we can live in a in a safe society and and live amongst each other with all of our differences and all of our flavors and culture right mm-hmm. yet it's it's important because our children watch us and mm-hmm. if we if we don't lead with with a, a level of kindness, a level of humility, a level of of I really truly care what happens in this zip code or yeah, in this yeah. community that I may not necessarily live in, but guess what? You vote for me. One has to be present. So what are we teaching them if we fail to act the way you've just described? Elections saying? elections have consequences. And, and it's important that people get to know their representatives, get to know the candidates, you know, who are they voting for and why are they voting for them? Because it's, it's, it's extremely important that, and all politics are local, really. I mean, think about it. Mm-hmm. My constituents will see me at a Publix, will see me at a Walmart, mm-hmm. will see me at a Target, <laughs> will see me in the mall. Yeah. But they saw me more so as a school board member. Sure. Right. Yeah, because right. I'm here all the time. Right. So being close to the people is super important because um, then, you know, based on what the needs are in the community, what pieces of legislation you might need to look at and 
and say, well, we need to tweak this a little bit. It might be a home rule thing. It might, there's so many things that could impact. But by the same token, it's, it's again, understanding that although you and I may have strong philosophical differences, at the end of the day, when we walk into these chambers, we are representing the residents of the state of Florida and their needs. And we have to work together. We have to work together. And the moment that there's an act of disrespect, handle it right there. Handle it right there. Because if you don't handle those times or those challenges, they're just going to build up Mm -hmm. on one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when the time comes that that it explodes and it implodes, it's going to be super ugly. So the moment you handle things... (laughs) When it happens and you handle them in such a one handles them in such a way in which doesn't necessarily have to be public. Right. You just say, come here, let's have a conversation. Yeah. And then you lay down your law and say, this is what's don't do this because this is what the consequences are going to be. And, you know, respect is respect. Yeah. If you want respect, you got to earn it. I'll give you the respect until you no longer have earned it, right? So making sure that people know where you're coming from, where one is coming from, and an understanding, like for instance, I'm very passionate about education, about our children and and their opportunities. So when I advocate strongly, my colleagues have learned that I'm really truly advocating for my passion. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm pontificating to the camera, or mm-hmm. it's not something that's just by chance. They'll know that if Susan sees something that's inequitable, regardless of the child, whether it's it's a wealthy uh, child in the public school system or one that 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 is in a Title I school from whatever end of the spectrum, if this child is missing something and that child deserves to have whatever it is that it's missing for their success, Susan will advocate strongly for that child. It's it's all about equity for me. That goes to something you said earlier about relationships within the capital. It would take some time for your colleagues to get to know you, to know that when they see you speaking on something that way, look, let's say it's someone who doesn't have the expertise you have, the background you have in education. They don't know up, down, left, right, blue, green, and the bill Right, right. right. We said you, you can't know everything. And but they might if they get to know Susan and they say when she talks that way, I know she's she's on to something and it matters. To and her. I need to listen. Uh-huh. Yeah, right, I need to listen. And if and if I had to take the vote right now, I might just vote the way Susan is saying we should because I trust her judgment. Correct. Correct. She's, she's I believe she's advocating for something in language in the bill that's a means to the end of helping people the way she says we should help them. And, and, and people, but people have to learn that about you, you have absolutely. To each other. Right. Right. It, absolutely. That's why that, that's why I started earlier. I think, think about having to build a relationship yeah. with 159 other individuals yeah. in two months that in, in, in two months with or all less the flurry of activity going on in that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, OMG, you have to make it a point. To pick up the phone and say, "Hey, I was just thinking about you today. How you doing?" Yeah, yeah. Tell you me, know, you said something uh, to me earlier uh, about we didn't. It wasn't when we were recording that you you've never known how to work or lead. I forget what you said, except from the middle. Yes. Tell me, re, re, say that again, and then tell me what that <clears throat> what you meant by that. I I lead I lead in a very neutral manner. I look at people. I don't look at their I don't look at people based on their party affiliation. I look at individuals based on their actions, mm-hmm. how they interact with others, mm-hmm. how they talk about others, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. their character. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I get to learn how to speak to others. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So that then they can hear my message. And it's it's a hard thing to do. But I see what you're saying. It could be, you know, shirts or skins. There's there's people of character on both sides. 
Absolutely. And people without character on both sides. On both, exactly. Doesn't matter exactly. if they're on your team or not. You then or not. You, you change how you interact with them because of their character, because your mm -hmm. goal is to serve from the seat you're in. If someone's going to serve with you, you're probably you're ready to work. Expect I'm ready to work, and I'm expecting that they're ready to work. If someone's well. going to work, if someone has a different <clears throat> because, agenda, personal, whatever I, it is. Whatever it is. It's just, it's not about the best interests of some segment of the Florida pop. And by the same token, if we were legislators together and you had something on your agenda that you wanted to, to complete, just tell me. Mm -hmm. This is my, just be forthright. This is my agenda because this is what's happening in my hometown. Mm -hmm. And this matters. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. That's interesting because if, if it was about education, <clears throat> you have a lot of background to share in that conversation with me. Yes. If it's about... Mm -hmm. Shipping, and maybe you know nothing about commerce and shipping, but it's Florida. But if I say to you, "Here's why it matters, Susan," and you, I have, I'm a man of character. I would say absolutely. You'll hear me differently than if I, I always look like I'm gaming or scheming something. You're right, or that you're trying to to benefit from something or whatever's right. like you know that shady business, right. Right? right? Not not into that stuff. So right. so that's why that's it's so important. So the leading to, from the middle was not was about the person i guess is what you were saying you right it's not about the person it's more like more like what describes the person uh -huh. white female republican uh -huh. i'm just looking at lou you're not making judgments about i'm not making white judgment female Republic, white male Republic, right, right, right just because you have an r or just because you're a d or just because you're this or that mm -mm. no i I'd, I'd lead from that middle of getting to know the individual and, and getting to know what their values are, how they operate. And if there's something that then during that conversation, and I'll say, well, I'll look, I'll look at this in a different way. Right. And this is why I would, hmm, okay, but, well, that's when we get to know, you know, what those. Well, and isn't it true, too, that over the years, there might have been people that you were more often than not on the same page. There might have been people that you weren't. But sometimes oh. sometimes when those differences are handled well, they become very creative. Absolutely. Right? So you might learn something from me. I might learn something from you because we had a different background, different experience, and we brought something different to the conversation. But if we listened, we might come up with something that neither of us could alone. Right? Uh, something Correct. could emerge from the conversation that makes a better public, a better education policy, a better decision about school books. Absolutely. And what's well, an example of what, what you've had an that example happen? of that? Well, yes, and even so, while I was on the school board, there were individuals that just not always on the same page, and these were community members or even teachers mm. that didn't really quite understand my whole trajectory, right? Okay. And when I left the school board, shortly afterwards, I was getting phone calls. I get it now. I understand now. Hmm. I wish you were back. You know, certain things, because of the fact sometimes... You're too close up on it. And what's that saying? You can't see the trees for the forest. Yeah, the forest for the trees. Yeah, right, right. For the forest right, for the trees because right. you're, too, you're too close up on it and right. you can't see it. Yeah, the perspective, yeah. The perspective. So so that, I think, is what happens a lot. And, and even some of those individuals today that maybe were some of my most major critics ah. um, on th that worked with the school board – Today, as a state legislator, they'll look at me and said, wow, I had it all wrong. <laughs> you know, and it's a different perspective because they got to know Susan a little bit more intimately and understand what made why I did certain things, well, I always, which I remember ended up benefiting students. From our conversations, <laughs> from what I knew about you, you were skilled at explaining what I my phrase means to ends. You would be able to say look, I see it this way because, or I think we should do this because. And I find if someone else could argue, say to you, let me give you a different way to look at it, Susan. You'd listen. But my point was for constituents or colleagues, I think you're skilled at providing the rationale, not just taking a position. 
Right. But for, and, and please understand, let me explain why I'm saying this, because so one, so you know, two, if you got something, if you, if you think of a different way and you could tell me, I might think of it a different way, but I don't know that yet. Absolutely, because until we have courageous conversations and real conversations, yeah. not just the fluff, yeah. you know, yeah. not just the feel good things. When we talk about a piece of legislation, tell me the good part and what do you think might be the unintended consequence? I, I try to go through that with every piece of legislation that we that we try to put forth is is what is the easiest way for it to be a win win situation and fix something that is that is incorrect. So for instance, think about it. We create laws in 60 days that affect Floridians for a lifetime mm-hmm. until they get amended again. Mm-hmm. 60 days. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they're not tested, they're not tried. It's just an idea that sounds great. Almost like cooking spaghetti and making sure it's done by taking a piece of spaghetti and sticking it to the wall. You know that yeah, the spaghettis insane, are right? done, right? Yeah. Let's eat. So that's that's almost sometimes how I feel that we make pieces of legislation yeah. that will have unintended consequences. Yeah. And then we have to go back the following session and try and fix it, which sometimes it's hard. Like, yeah, it's I hard it's to revisit something. It may yeah. not get heard in committee. It may not you know, move. And still the unintended consequences there. So one of the things that I've been talking about in, my, in our committees is that when we try to make a piece of legislation, let's think about what other silos they are affecting. So, for instance, one that I, I don't agree with is, is that if you don't pay your child support, your license gets suspended. Mm-hmm. I understand that there has to be some accountability. However, and if I take yeah. away, exactly, if I take away the ability to work, to work, you're not going to be more likely to pay your child support. <laughs> nobody's winning, you know, nobody's winning. You know, yeah. the, the prison system might be winning because there's going to be another another yeah. gentleman in prison. Yeah. Right. Right. So there we go. So that's that's where I, I think that we don't listen or we don't pay attention to how these pieces of legislation are going to affect other silos that then will affect the lives of, of Floridians. So I really try to, I'll ask staff then the help of bill drafting, do you all see any conflicting, yeah. conflicting things that might affect other silos? Because that's not, I don't want to muddy the water. I want to clear the water so right. that everyone right. has a clear path right. of knowing if this happens, then this, and if that happens, then that. Right. And then if not, it goes this way, you right. know, and you have a clear path. And like you say, it's hard to do that in side of 60 days. But yeah. Yes, it is. What about mm-hmm. when, what happens when you can't get on the same page with someone? I don't think that getting on the same page is the right outcome of all situations. We just will wind up to agree to disagree. And if, pieces of legislation still come forth, then the one way to bring awareness to how wild or how good or how bad a piece of legislation is, is to be able to talk about it in committee and put those points on the record. Mm -hmm. And then again, if it makes it to the floor, bring those points back up on the floor. If you think about the Florida House of Representatives, there are 42, 42 Democrats to 78 Republicans. So they're in the majority. So a lot of things mm-hmm. that they're going to bring forth mm-hmm. may not necessarily agree with the philosophy of the Democrat Party. But by the same token, the only way that we can bring things up to light about these pieces of legislation that may not necessarily be part of what our value system is. All we can do at that point is bring up these values, talk about and put it on the record that this bill will hurt these kinds of people da, 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 and just put it forth. And then at the end of the day, it's just a matter of a, of agreeing to disagree and then come back next session and try and make amendments or bring pieces of legislation again and again and again before they'll get heard. So it's it's a process. So I want you to think about this for the for the listening audience out there. In the state of Florida, we have two year terms, maximum of eight years. So every two years we must run for office. Mm -hmm. Within those two years, we have two sessions of 60 days of pieces of legislation and six committee weeks. 
right? So during committee weeks, that's when we try to listen to bills and, and, and work these committees, right? Work these bills. And then you run for office again. Mm -hmm. So it's almost you have eight years to try and make a difference. And sometimes your piece of legislation, you might be bringing it back every session mm -hmm. and it gets a little closer because it was given to another committee and it got heard and, but it never made it to the floor. Well, you bring it back next year. And it's, it's just that constant uh, reminder of something that you really, really truly care about mm -hmm. and that your, your, your constituents care about. You don't give up on it. Gotcha. You don't give up on it. You, I, I bring it back to leadership. It says, help me make this bill better because this bill is going to help residents in my district and residents in the state of Florida. What is it that, that y'all don't like about this bill? Help me fix it mm -hmm. because this is good for most people. And, and when you, you know, when you cross over the aisle and, and you go have those conversations mm -hmm. and share with them how important this is to you and your constituents, you know, it's that it's being that good, good steward, good member, mm -hmm, good, mm -hmm. that good individual. And that's how you keep doors open. And do you think, do you find it mostly <clears throat> possible, doable most of the time or more often than not, that uh, interest could be balanced? So if somebody thought that something you were proposing would have an adverse impact on the business community, for any, just to pick one example, do you find that most of the time, if you have that genuine conversation where you dig into the issues, you could find a way to balance the interests so that your piece of legislation could move forward? And maybe that's oversimplified. You're, you're, you're just right. You're right on point. You are right on point the way you described that. For instance, I'll give you an example. Many of the doctors in my community have shared with me, you know, think about when you go have a procedure and you're given an authorization number, right, to have a procedure. And then when the claim gets filed, that claim gets denied because it was not authorized. What do you mean? I had an authorization number. Yeah. Right? So now it becomes a retroactive denial. So I try to put a piece of legislation about not allowing retroactive uh, denials to occur. The insurance industry went crazy. Yeah, I bet they did. So it's like, they, you know, we had a conversation. I says, well, we need to do better on ensuring that if we have an authorization for physicians to do a procedure, it's not the patient's fault at that point. They got an authorization number. That means that the insurance company approved You're this obligated procedure. To pay it. You're obligated to do something. We have to yeah. do some, you know, you should do so. But that's, that goes with the territory. You know, you're going to have those times and those instances where I'm looking at the consumer, at the patient. Why should the patient have to uh, pay for this test that is now maybe 2500 and some change <laughs> while they have insurance and you had an authorization number yeah. for it? I, I don't get that. Moneyed interests are, can be powerful. Organized interests can be very powerful. Absolutely. And I know that you probably keep one eye on those who aren't as organized whose interests aren't as organized, whose interests aren't as well funded, trying to make sure that they're represented faithfully and fairly too. Mm -hmm. And that their interests are met through legislation or not harmed through legislation because I think probably from a principal standpoint, you feel like that's what you were elected to do. <laughs> that's your job. So what are the, what, what, is there a ground, is there a same page to get on? Is there the common ground to create around principle like you just talked about? What are those conversations like when moneyed and organized interests are behind part of the conversation? What I try to do and, and I've done is I'll bring those players together at the table. All right, now we got trouble in Houston. How are we going to fix this? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's not that easy right? to just say, you know, how do we fix this? And the mere fact that we brought <clears throat> those two individuals of saying, okay, this is my constituent. Y'all have caused this problem for my constituent. How do you fix this? We need we need to find a common ground of how we can move forward. And the only way I know how to how to get to the root of the problem is by bringing all of the stakeholders together and having a real conversation. It has to be a respectful conversation. It has to be a conversation that we are looking to see how we can come up with a solution to a problem that may or may not exist because we yeah, may right. find out that, oh my God, well, this is a problem here. It's not here. 
well then how how do we create it so that we bridge those two and, and there is no problem period you know so the only way again those relationships that trust factor and and the genuineness because i don't know about you but the moment i feel that i'm being played i'm done yeah you know or that i'm being used to get to some place i'm done mm-hmm. at that point you're not going to uh you're not going to utilize me in that form right right Right. So so it, that genuineness is super important, that trust level and building those relationships and just listening are it's just really how I operate and, and I try. It. And, and it and it took me a while because I'm not patient. I'm not a very patient person. If I want something done, it's like I wanted it five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Right. And and sometimes in this process. Mm. What it has taught me has been patience mm-hmm. because... Well, like you said, it could be four, five, six cycles before you get before something... You can, exactly. <laughs> before you can actually get something tweaked and done, that it's a good product that you can get pushed through that does the same exact thing that you wanted it to accomplish from the get-go without compromising your values and what you expected the outcome to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> back, back to the values. Uh, but, well, we've talked for quite some time now and have covered a lot of great topics. Was there anything else that you wanted to touch on or, or talk about that we we should spend no. some time on? Just just basically, well, thank you so much for this opportunity to, to have a conversation with you, Lou, and and hopefully the the insights that I've shared will, will help future leaders reflect on this conversation and and really get into what servant leadership is all about and and understanding the importance of what it is to listen, not be reactive, and the importance of strong leadership. Sometimes if you stay focused on the right things, like those values and principles and conversation, you can cut through the crap. You can cut Absolutely. through the noise. You can cut through the nonsense and say, look, you have your interests and I have a mm-hmm. job to do. I'm trying to do it this I'm trying to do it faithfully, I'm trying to do it with with genuinely with some authenticity what I think I was elected to do so I want to work with you and see if I can if you've got different interests and objectives I still want to work with you see if they can be mutually met if they can't I, I, you can't ask me to compromise exactly my principles and my values because that's what people elected me really that's what people elect you to do to, to, to do exactly <laughs> to your point it's it's a balancing act it's also remembering I always try to look at the good in people and as a politician, that is a flaw. And I won't change that flaw. Mm-hmm. Because I truly believe in gonna, the good in people. You're not going to change yourself at this, in, for no. that reason. No. People people will come and they'll come with good intentions, malintents, the, the, whatever their reason. But when they come, and when they come, I should say, mm-hmm. they're going to be treated with caring, warmth welcoming and we'll move forward and to your point we can cut through the the foolishness and and we can say okay this is for real you know this is uh <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're good intentions um yeah. or not so it's i always look at the good in people and and I, I i can't change that because the moment i become skeptical it's time to go because there's more I really, truly believe in the good in people. Well, we are you know. good people, and and we have we have challenges that we all face individually as families, and and it's not that um, they're bad per se. Um, it's just that ish happens, right? Stuff happens, and when stuff happens, hopefully there'll be some folks there to be able to help guide. Uh, those individuals in the right direction of fixing whatever ills they may be going through. Well, one of the good things about looking for the good in people is it's a principled way to interact with people. And if someone is coming to you in a less than principled way, you kind of respectfully get to call them out on it. But, Sometimes they call themselves out. Yeah, uh, Right. Without even knowing. Right. They're either going to step up because you're being principled. They're either going to step up to join you there or they're not. And always in a kind way and always right. in a kind way. So right. that's that's what makes it so fall into place, if you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. Thank you very so, much. <laughs> Thank definitely. you. Definitely. 
Well, I've enjoyed our time together. This has just been great. You've been very generous with your time. It's been a big chunk of your afternoon. I really appreciate <laughs> it. I think you had some, you shared some great thoughts that are insightful and lessons. And that's what I hope to do with the, with the, with the show is give people who are, uh, listen to it to get some ideas of things to try, ways to look at things, things, ways to think about things. And maybe they have their mm -hmm. own aha moments. In the I show. hope so. <laughs> Thank you. I think I, they did. I hope that that it was helpful for your your uh, audience and uh, and just know that we're here to serve. So if there's anyone out there that needs um, any help or whatever, uh, feel free to look us up and and give us a call or send us an email. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate okay. it. All well, right. take it easy. I gotta get getting ready to go to a three thirty Department of Education Zoom meeting. I think you go. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Lou. Talk to you bye -bye. soon. Don't Thank be you. a stranger. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. And that's how we see it, my friends. I want to thank Susan for recording today's episode. You can find it at icwhatyoumean.castos.com, plus all the places you listen to podcasts. Send questions and suggestions through your app. Subscribe and give me a five-star rating unless you can't, in which case, let me know why. And join me next week when we take another look at how to get on the same page and stay there, unless you shouldn't. <laughs>